give you something beautiful tonight. Here's a little reading from Swami Vivekananda. I'll cut in to say some things here and there, just to make sure that it's clear. He says, bhakti, or devotion, love for God, bhakti cannot be used to fulfill any desires, itself being the check to all desires, which means that devotion itself is the fulfillment of all desires. So it's, it, it, it stops desire because you become self-contained, self-content. There's nothing necessary. Narada, who is a great sage, uh, who really perfected the scriptures around the love of God, Narada gives us these signs of love. When all thoughts, all words, all deeds are given up unto the Lord, and the least forgetfulness of God makes one intensely miserable, then love has begun. Now, I was really intrigued by this verse, because if you take a look at the practitioners of Advaita Vedanta, or the path of knowledge, Jnana Yoga, that's a path of stopping thought, of removing, of, of slowing the mind down, you know, and, and becoming aware of the present moment, the presence of God the presence of the divine everywhere within us. And so here we're seeing the same thing, but in devotional language, when all thoughts, all words, and all deeds are given up unto the Lord, and the least forgetfulness of God makes one intensely miserable, then love has begun. So yes, when, when, when you turn away from the beloved or forget that you are living in the presence of divine love, if for a moment that slips your mind, there is such sadness in that, if you have tasted that divine bliss, to have it disappear is unbearable. This is the highest form of love, because in it there is no desire for reciprocity. Which desire is found in all human love? A man who has gone beyond social and scriptural usage is a sannyasin or a monk. When the whole soul goes to God, when we take refuge only in the beloved, then we know that we are about to get this love. Obey the scriptures until you are strong enough to do without them, then go beyond them. Books are not final. Verification is the only proof of religious truth. Each must verify for himself, and no teacher who says, I have seen, but you cannot see, is to be trusted, only that one who says, you can see too. God can be seen, God can be experienced. That is the, the, the fulfillment of human life. It's not something that has to exist only on faith. It is to be experienced. All scripture and all truths of all times and of all countries are Vedas because of these truths. These truths are to be seen, and anyone may discover them. When the sun of love begins to break on the horizon, we want to give up all of our actions unto God, and when we forget him for a moment, it grieves us gravely. Let nothing stand between God and your love for him. Love him, love her, love him, and let the world say what it will. Love is of three sorts. One demands, but gives nothing. The second is exchange. And the third is love without thought of return. Love like the moth has for light. Love is higher than works. Love is higher than yoga. Love is higher than knowledge. Don't let anything get between you and your love of love your love of the divine. Remember it, focus on it, meditate on it. Let it inspire your heart to where your life is about showing love only to everything and everyone. And your worship is not a worship that happens in temples outside of yourself. It happens in the temple of your very own body. Your worship of the divine is not some otherworldly thing. It's you seeing the beloved in the eyes of everyone around you and serving them as your worship to God, to worship the living God, to worship the divine that dwells in all beings, all things. 
and to walk around recognizing that. One of my favorite poems by Hafiz is about a stray dog that comes up to this great sage and the sage bends down and scratches the dog under the chin and says to him, my beloved, I am so glad that you have come to visit me today. That is what it is to be spiritual, to know yourself as spirit of the nature of love and to express that in every way possible through a body and through a mind out to a world in which God alone dwells as all things.